At the core of all of our developments is a patented platform technology known as the hemopurifier. The hemopurifier is a broad-spectrum therapeutic device that mimics the natural immune response of attacking viruses and viral toxins before cells and organs can be infected. The device is a single-use sealed cartridge designed for use in conjunction with portable pumps and to be utilized within the global infrastructure of dialysis machines already operating in hospitals and clinics. It converges the established scientific principles of hemodialysis and plasmapheresis with the convergence of affinity chromatography, specifically the discovery of new affinity agents that are able to capture a wide range of envelope pathogens. Our market focus is the treatment of drug and vaccine-resistant pathogens, which represent the largest opportunity in the infectious disease world. Specifically, we look at conditions where there is no vaccine or cure, an absence of antiviral treatment, or a resistance to antiviral treatment as a result of natural mutation, or in the case of biological weapons, genetic engineering. Government fields have the greatest like most. There's a vast number of When reviewing the attributes of the hemopurifier as a countermeasure against biological weapons, we first recognize that it has broad spectrum capabilities. Again, these capabilities would allow it to work across the boundaries of multiple viral pathogens, including drug and vaccine-resistant pathogens and genetically modified pathogens. The hemopurifier could be beneficial to drug therapy if such therapies are available. And very importantly, it can be deployed during the ID phase because it has the selective ability to remove envelope viruses from pathogen. And in the last point, prior to the identification of the pathogen, and post-treatment, researchers are most likely to want to access the cartridge to help in identifying the pathogen that's been released on either the civilian or military population. We've also established a leadership position in the biodefense field. Global researcher Frost and Sullivan awarded us the 2006 Technology Innovation Award because of our applications in biodefense. I have testified before Congress related to issues on biological weapons, including the use of the Athlon hemopurifier as a treatment countermeasure. We have been instrumental in device legislation, specifically the expansion of the definition of countermeasure to now include medical devices. And we've received support from a variety of different industry leaders, not just those in the nephrology field and the virology field, but also those specific to biodefense. This includes Dr. Ken Alabek, the former head of the Russian Bioweapon Program, and Dr. Charles Bailey, the former head of infectious disease research at USAMRIT. Both Dr. Bailey and Alabek have collaborated on a paper that discusses the importance of our Athlon hemopurifier as a potential countermeasure against Category A pathogens. The commercialization of our hemopurifier will be driven by the following events. In the first quarter of this year, we will file an investigational device exemption, also known as an IDE, with the FDA. This will be related to fulfilling our human challenge, which will be a 10-patient human safety study. And parallel to these efforts, we'll develop supporting data in the form of in vitro studies and an animal efficacy model to be determined. In regards to in vitro studies, these will be demonstrations that the hemopurifier can remove the actual pathogens, and these are Category A pathogens, that are infectious to man. To do this, we'll need to develop research collaborations with either one or more of the four biosafety level four facilities that are established here in the United States. I'll talk more about that on the next slide. Once we've completed our safety study, we'll seek emergency use authorization and then seek to file a formal pre-market approval to allow for the commercialization of our technology. And then we'll continue to submit and expand label indications in the first quarter of this year that in vitro studies of the Ebola our efforts in the HIV AIDS field also continue to progress. As many of you know, there is no cure for HIV, and even those that respond effectively to drug regimens ultimately become drug resistant. We also know that the form of 
affinity agents immobilized in our cartridge have been demonstrated by the National Cancer Institute and the NIH to be able to bind to all viral strains. We've developed a large amount of supporting in vitro data, and as referenced in prior disclosures, we're currently in discussions with the National AIDS Research Institute of India, which oversees the 7.5 million infected patients in that country. In related activities, I was invited to speak this past year at the 16th International AIDS Conference held in Toronto, and the AIDS Institute, a premier AIDS advocacy organization, just awarded the 2007 HIV Life Science Leadership Award for, for our activities in this space. In conclusion, I hope I have provided a rationale for remaining or becoming a shareholder in Athlon Medical. Our technology offers an important treatment solution for drug and vaccine resistant viruses. We're operating under favorable legislation. We have expedited regulatory paths. And this is not an early R&D research project. We have, treat, we have human treatment experience. We've demonstrated safety in humans. And we've demonstrated the ability to capture a virus that's a major market condition in a human study. In terms of near-term value drivers, I think you can expect multiple collaborations, hopefully collaborations that would drive non-dilutive grant income into our organization. I think you can also expect multiple data points and these will be data points related to viral conditions that are untreated with drug and vaccine countermeasures. And the last point will be the filing of our investigational device exemption, which historically, that is a value driver for companies of our nature. The last point I'll leave you with is valuation, and I'll just point out our current market valuation resides under $10 million. And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon Little boy blue in the mail